Hey guys, how you doing? It's Kevtech here bringing you another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good day. Happy Saturday. And today I want to go over interview questions that I would ask, that I was asked for cybersecurity. Actually, you do make sure you know what to do. Rate, comment, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Greatly appreciate it. So today I want to ask, I'm gonna answer some security questions that were asked by me when I went for a job interview for cybersecurity. All right. Question number one. How do you stay up to date with technology? So my answer for that question was I follow um Cisco, I follow Microsoft, I follow AWS, I follow GCP, I follow a lot of different platforms on LinkedIn. I also follow people on YouTube that are a part of cybersecurity. I'm also active on Twitter. Um, I also have notifications for when incidents happen. Uh, I'm also familiar with different types of CVEs and I get notified about CVEs uh, um, regularly on a day-to-day -day basis when things change and when things happen. So that was my answer for question number one, was asking me how to stay up to date with um, the latest trends of cybersecurity and technologies. Uh, question number two for me, what I was asked is, um, how do you handle change management? So what's your process of change management? Say, for example, you had to deploy software applications for 500 users on Saturday night how would you handle it or how do you how would you deploy it and do it? So my answer for this question when I had the job interview, um, I said I uh, I will create a change management ticket. So we'll create a change management ticket. It needs to go to the proper channels for proper approval. Um, and I do it in a wave in the waves of pilots. So what that means is I will do changes first with the IT department first. So we would make changes on the IT department first before we make any changes for any of the executives, any of the C-level folks. All of the people around me, we normally don't target the executives first. It's usually IT first. We make changes on our end just to make sure that I don't have any hiccups, anything weird going on. And then little by little, we start making changes with all the other people that that I guess we have. We get along with them. We have a solid relationship with them, whether it's through HR or finance, whatever department that... Uh, we have a good relationship with, we would start implementing changes on their end too. And then slowly, but surely, slowly move over to the proper chains of command into the executive leaderboard or executive leader committee, where I actually will work with the executives one by one. Because sometimes with the executives, you need to do some handholding because they're not going to be happy about changes. They're not going to be happy about certain things that you implement. So I will work with them one-on-one -on -one with their admin assistant, whoever's working, whoever works underneath them, whether it's a secretary, whoever it is, make set changes to them one-on-one. -on -one, and then finally push everyone over little by little. So we do it in small increments in order for you to make a change management. So that was my answer for that question. Um, the next question they asked me about is, do you know any common active directory red team attacks for your domain controller? And I said, yes, I'm familiar with Bloodhound. I'm familiar, I'm familiar with golden ticket attacks. I'm familiar with silver ticket attacks. I'm familiar with SMB trying to take control, SMB share drive files, um, things like that. So that was question number three that they asked me. And then question number four, what they asked me is how how did you how did you handle a tough customer and, and how did you resolve it? So yeah, I did have one I did have one tough customer one time where I was working with a customer and um I had to make some changes on his computer because he couldn't do his job. So literally uh, we have this thing called roaming profile and his computer wasn't working because his profile was all messed up. So he was really upset and frustrated. And the only way for me to get it to work or give him a workaround was I had to give him another machine. So literally he, his computer was all messed up. I couldn't fix it. So I just, gave him, I just completely gave him another machine, backed everything up and slowly moved everything over for him. That's the only way I was able to fix that. There was no other fix. The computer the computer operating system was corrupted at that point. So the customer was upset with me because of that. And yeah, I didn't I didn't take it personal. I didn't get upset. I just resolved the issue. Got him up and running. He was good to go after that. He was upset with me at the beginning because nothing was working for him, but I figured out that his roaming pro they had an issue with his profile because I went to the C drive. I went to C drive slash users and I looked at his account and had like it had like uh, his username, and then the other one had like an unknown account, like like a weird letters and numbers. I'm like, yeah, this this, this the account is corrupted. So he had like another username inside users, and if that makes sense, on the C drive. So I already I immediately knew there was something wrong with his computer. So I had a tough customer. That was the one that I had to deal with, and that's how I handled it. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, 
And then the next question, they they asked me um, if if someone has a virus on their computer, how do you, how do you handle that situation? So um, my answer to that question was, I, I first want to know who who's the person that's being affected. That's number one. Number two, I want to know um, if they have any in information that we could probably back up and save on their computer that they need, like any sensitive information that we could back up and save. But obviously, before you do all that, you want to make sure you take it off the network. Um, you put it off the network. You put it. You put it off the network. You put it. You press F A or you put it on a net. Uh, um, safe safe mode with no networking. Um, you slowly start saving and updating things on the back end for that computer. Uh, you run some scans in there, and yeah, you just grab all the data. You put the data in another machine. Um, just make sure you scan it first before you do before we move data over. Make sure that computer is up to date with um, no viruses. Scan it. Run these things on the back end, and um. You may have to reinstall the whole operating system because that computer is probably not working at this point. Reinstall everything. And yeah, that's it. It should be all set after that. So we either give them a new machine or you could reinstall the whole operating system and just run the scan and everything, depending on the situation. Uh, we also want to know the severity of the, of the data or the information that's on that computer because uh, we don't know if any of that information got, got leaked or taken out and got sent over to someone that is a bad guy or someone that has an adversary. So we don't know if that's ever happened before. So those, those things are very important. Understanding um, your uh, SOC 2 plan or your playbook for a blue team, if that makes sense. So every company handles it differently, depending on the company you work with, work for. Every company has their own blue team playbook. So once you figure out how that is set up or we'll, we'll figure out what they're using as a plan, you go based on that. Like in some scenarios, you will take it off the network and then you would just move all the sensitive data back to another computer and you know, just make sure scan it, make sure there's no viruses on it. In some scenarios, you need to figure out what the severity is and who's affecting and who needs to know about the problem, right? So every company is different. Um, so yeah, that's that was my answer for that question. Um, another cybersecurity question they asked me about was about CVEs and um, can you give me an example of a CVE? And I, and I explained to them about the print, print spooner services how you could manipulate print spooner services on a server. So if every server, um, there was a print spooner nightmare um, CVE that came out and a lot of people were trying to manipulate the print spooner services when they were when they had server manager or or they had server set up on their random server like 20, 2022, server 2019. They were trying to use print spooner nightmare services and they were trying to manipulate the, the server and try to get into that, try to get into that server. So... I was explaining about that. Um, and then they asked, it was another question they asked me was, um, and this one was, was like, it was almost like a no brainer question. Um, when I went for this job interview, they asked me, um, uh, what, what technologies or what things do you do for training for cybersecurity? And I explained, I used to try hack me, hack the box. And then they asked me like, what rooms, what, what rooms have I been doing? And then I said, I was doing the security the security, uh, cybersecurity beginner room for uh, Try Hack Me. And I also explained that I was doing the red team room for Try Hack Me. And they were asking me, oh, what did you learn about that? And I talked about Active Directory. I talked about how you could run different types of attacks on Active Directory. I talked about how um, you have the service account, which is the KRPGT account. Um, and I have to double check the name of it, but that, that service account controls your authentication to Kubros. And you have to reset the password two times in a row on that account and check your group policy. I think it's like 12 hours by default. I gotta double, I gotta double check my homework on that. But um, the reset counter is 12 hours. So you have to reset the password twice in a row or something like that. So I was explaining that to the hiring manager and the manager's the, the job the job manager or the hiring manager that's the, he's part of the cybersecurity team. Was, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that is right. That's correct, Kevin. So that was my answer to that question. So these are some common interview questions that I got asked. I mean, everyone's experience is different. I had some personality questions too, like, um, do you work better by yourself or do you work better with a team? And I, and I said, I rather, it doesn't really matter to me. I work better either, either one or the other, but I, prefer, but I prefer to be on a team because we both could, you know, we could throw ideas at each other. We could learn from one another. And I think it's a good learning experience to be with someone else. So they actually like personality questions like that. But yeah, that's it for me. That was all, those are all the interview questions. And I have other interview questions. But those are the ones that I was asked for one of these job interviews that I went to. With that being said, hopefully this helps you out. 
if you're trying to go into security analyst, this is a security analyst role that I apply to. They ask me these interview questions. With that being said, I hope you have a good one and have a good day. Take care. Peace. Bye.